These days, a lot of folks are interested in bringing back old world style using faux wood ceiling beams. They can add a rustic flair to just about any room. Best of all, faux beams are easy to install, making them an ideal do-it-yourself project. They're convincingly realistic, with variegated colors and deeply embossed grain and texture. Despite their realistic appearance, they're extremely lightweight, since they're made of high-density polyurethane and hollow inside. The beams are available in a wide range of colors, wood species, and sizes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install these beams. We'll begin by locating the ceiling joists. Well, I've used the stud finder to locate the ceiling joists, and I've marked them in blue tape. Now, if I were going to run the beams this way, I could actually attach them to those joists. But in our case, I want to run the beams in this direction. They'll never cross over the joists, so we're going to have to use a different hanging system. Now, this is a mock-up of the hanging system we're going to use. These two rails, or simply two-by-twos, are going to be attached to the ceiling, and then the beam would slip right over them like that. The next step is to determine how far apart we want the beams, then to measure and mark the location. Measuring the inside of the beam tells us how far apart the outside edges of the rails need to be. I'll measure half that distance on each side of the center point and draw lines. Alternatively, I could make up a simple gauge that's the same width and use it to mark the rail locations. The masking tape we put up to mark the ceiling joist locations can now be taken down. I drive in a nail on the line for the outer side of the rail, loop the end of a chalk line over it, move to the opposite wall, hold the other end of the chalk line on the edge mark there, and snap. I repeat the process for the other outside line. Now there are a pair of rail location lines for each beam. Now that the chalk lines are up, it's time to start installing the rails. I begin by marking the rails at 36 inch intervals. Then drill a quarter inch hole on the marked spots. This part is best done with two people. So I ask my friend Justin to lend a hand. We make certain the edge of the rail is aligned with the chalk line, then drill through the holes in the rail and into the ceiling. The rails will be fastened to the ceiling using a toggle bolt. The wings on the nut will be folded back, then the nut will be passed through a hole in the ceiling. On the back side of the ceiling wallboard, the wings will flip out, preventing the nut from coming back out. I'm changing the bit to a larger size so that I can enlarge the hole in the ceiling. Then I insert the toggle bolt through the hole in the rail, spin on the toggle nut, pinch the wings together, lift the rail into position, and insert the toggle through the hole in the ceiling. Next, I tighten the toggle bolt until the rail is tight against the ceiling. The companion rail is put up the same way making sure the edge is aligned with the chalk line. The rails can also be attached using a toggle anchor like this. Again, the hole is enlarged to accept the fastener. The wing on the anchor is folded down and the fastener is slipped through the hole. Then this cap or collar is slid along until it contacts the body of the anchor. The straps are then snapped off. This bolt is then inserted through the hole in the rail, screwed into the anchor, and then tightened until the rail is snug against the ceiling. Using either fastening method, the rest of the rails are installed. Two people. Okay. 
To make sure the rails are the right distance apart, I slip a scrap piece of beam over them and check for fit. With all the rails up, it's now time to measure for the length of the beams. Then transfer that measurement to the beam itself. Using a speed square and a scoring tool, I mark a line on three sides. Since the surface is a dark color, I'm making a score line rather than drawing a pencil line, since it will be more visible. Now, if I were going to cut this beam with a handsaw, I'd prefer a Japanese handsaw. Why? Well, it has very, very fine teeth, which will give me a very smooth cut. The blade itself is quite thin, which gives me more precision. And perhaps most of all, this saw cuts as I pull it toward me, which I believe gives me a lot more control. With this saw, I prefer to cut one side at a time, turning the beam as necessary. The beams can also be cut with a conventional handsaw. However, the quickest and easiest way to cut the beams is with a power miter saw. Again, the beam is scribed or marked on all three sides and rotated after each cut. This is because most blades are not large enough to cut completely through on one pass. Cutting slightly outside the line and then sanding off the excess is a good way to make a tight fit, especially when the ceiling and walls are not exactly perpendicular. This can be done with an orbital sander or a sanding block. With the beams cut to length, it's time to put them up by simply slipping them over the pairs of rails. If the beams are large, 12 to 16 inches, it's advisable to apply a bead of construction adhesive to the outside edges of the rails before slipping the beams in place. The beams are secured with finish nails every 12 to 14 inches, or by using finish head screws. The recessed nail or screw heads are filled with colored wood putty. This process is repeated until all the beams are up. For added realism, beam accessories like hangers, brackets, and plates can be put up. Made from silicone polyurethane composite, these accent pieces can be cut with a sharp utility knife. Beads of polyurethane adhesive are applied to the back and flattened with a putty knife. Additional beads are added, then the accessory is pressed into place and held in position with finish nails. Faux wood beams add texture to an otherwise plain ceiling. They can bring warmth and a cozier feel to a space. They can add a beautiful farmhouse look to a kitchen or a lodge look to a living room. Wood has always had a certain rustic charm. Today, its warm and welcoming look is being enjoyed in just about any room in the house. <laughs>